Dog. My very special guest today is actor producer Tim Pellari. How you doing, Tim? Good. How are you, Bruce? Great. Thanks for calling. I'm glad to have you on here. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Like some dogs barking. Quiet down. Quiet down. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> Um, the reason why you're on here, obviously, is because of one of your new productions that's uh, going through its circuit that um, I had a pre- privilege of getting a copy sent to me and I watched, which we'll talk about that a little later, but if you don't mind, this is a horror podcast, but since you have an interesting credits, you know, some shorts, I'm just going to go ahead and do everything, if you don't mind, from 05 sure. to present. Now, the first one I want to ask you about... Um, is Lost and Found in 2005. It's a short drama, but, you know, just to get an idea of who Tim Pillary is. Sure thing. So, if you want to talk to, you know, tell the listeners what this is about, you know, how, what do you want to say? It's cool. Yeah, uh, Lost and Found, I think it's around a 10, 15 minute short um, that I uh, made with uh, an old buddy living back in uh, Massachusetts. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see. It's about uh, it's about Alec who uh, fights his demons sort of quite literally uh, through his imagination. You see um, me uh, in the in the present and and in the real time, real life. Uh, you know, drinking and and uh, thinking about his uh, ex girlfriend, and then and then actually going inside his head and uh, literally fighting a demon. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Some some good uh, demon makeup and effects on that and it was pretty good interesting now, I, I find it uh, interesting with short films you know, um, I never saw a short film until like earlier this year and uh, what, what's neat about short films is you get the gist of the story so quick you know and then when it's over with and especially if it, if it really affects you you're still thinking about it 20 minutes after you watched it because it's still fresh in your mind that's what I think is cool about short films yeah, they're real cool, and they, uh, you know, as a filmmaker or you know, even as a viewer, I mean, it's you don't have much time to, uh, you don't have much time at all to uh, to get used to the movie. You know, you got a ten minute short or whatever, right? You got to make it like, real quick. Yeah. And uh, in a lot of ways, I think it's harder to make a good short film than it is to make a feature film, a good feature film. Right, because a feature film you go by scene, 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 but in the short film it's boom, 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 and we're done. But you, I mean, you actually, yeah. got, you actually got to get it right the first time, or maybe second time. But yeah, that's interesting. The next one, um, if I'm mistaken, uh, the Prestige in 2006. Yeah, um, yeah, I was basically doing some extra work um, on that, and uh, they they picked me out of a crowd of uh, extras and sort of featured me as uh, the piano player in uh, in a scene with uh, with Christian Bale and. Uh, you probably, I mean, you, I'm definitely in the movie. You, I, I can see me, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, yeah. If you didn't know me, if you didn't know where to look, you'd never uh, find me. But it's still credit. That's all that matters, right? But still, uh, yeah. In her. Now, uh, you know what? Uh, the next one, um, it, it has a funny name, but uh, it's a comedy. Um, Charlie Cobb's Flash Bash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charlie Cobb's Flash Bash is a, uh, it, it was, uh, started as a webisode. It's a, uh, it's a webisode that I'm pretty sure you can still find online. Um, and it's, it's all in, it, in its entirety. Um, it's on a website called Live Video. I think it's livevideo.com slash, uh, Flash Bash or slash Charlie Cobb's Flash Bash. Okay. And I play the, the lead, uh, the guy named, uh, Kirby. And he, um, uh, meets a girl, sort of like a Lindsay Lohan, Paris Hilton type of girl who, uh, you know, is very famous and she takes a liking to him and, uh, they sleep together at this party. And, uh, what he didn't know, what, uh, my character didn't know is that she has a, uh, big wrestler boyfriend who, uh, just found out about it and is coming to the party to kill him. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And, uh, it's, uh, and that happens pretty early in the, in the, in the movie. So, uh, so Kirby has to, uh, Try to find a way to get the heck out of the party uh, without uh, before he gets there, and it's it's a party at a very isolated location, and you need a van to take you, and there's a lot, all sorts of obstacles preventing him from leaving. Okay. It's a little like three o'clock high. I don't know if you remember that one from the eighties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that movie. It's a 
it's actually a lot like that one. And okay. uh, it was made uh, with a company I was working with, um, so I have been working with for uh, a long time now, uh, called the uh, Iron Sink. And uh, yeah, that, yeah, we made that quite a while ago. It was a lot of fun, though. Well, now th- this next short I did see. Um, I watch it still. I must have watched it like 20 times. I get a kick out of this one. And you know what I'm getting at. But since yeah. uh, I won't mention this person until we get to Pan Man, but the short is called Downsize in 2008. Um, as you know, I interviewed G. Larry Butler uh, quite a few months back. He's a neat character. Fun to talk to. Interesting. Um, but... Uh, do you want to explain, listeners, about Downsize? Now, this movie is available online still. I find mistake, and it's on Vimeo. Um, yeah, that's correct. And uh, people, if you're listening to me this this interview, you guys got to check this out. Go to Vimeo and type in Downsized 2008 or Dan Reiser or look for G. Larry Butler. You'll find this short, or even Tim Polari. Um But uh, you guys got to see this. It's about a boss who goes crazy. And I'll let Tim explain it to you. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I think I think it's very timely in uh, in our uh, current uh, economic state here in the country, um, where uh, a, uh, a boss gets uh, let go by the shareholders, and uh, he calls in his uh, underlings at about three or four a.m. And, uh, and there's only I think four of us, and uh, he he uh, basically <laughs> just calls them in there to kill them. <laughs> I know. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the boss is played by uh, a good friend of mine, uh, G. Larry Butler, and uh, one of my most favorite people in the whole world. And uh, so he uh, attacks uh, with an axe. And uh, let's see, Dan Reeser uh, wrote and directed it, also uh, one of my uh, very good friends. And, uh, yeah, we had a blast doing that. And I played uh, the the lead guy who uh, ends up uh, sort of saving the day, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was that was the first time I met Larry, and uh, first time I worked with Dan actually. So uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun on that one. Yeah, it's 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 neat how it's made because, like I said before, there are a lot of people in this world that have ADD. Adult AD is concluded, and sometimes when people watch movies, they they get like a little bored there for a minute, and then they lose track of where they're at. But short films are perfect for them because you know you get to just and go. But I guarantee I recommend this short. For anybody to see, to see G. Larry Butler on how he plays a crazy person, he, he does it so well. It's kind of scary, but yeah. <laughs> the next, the, the next, Great. the next movie is a horror mystery from 2008. It's called A Sunshine Away. Yeah, um, this one I uh, is very uh, near and dear to me. Um, not unlike the rest, but um, this is a. Uh, a movie that I made with um, some of my good friends from uh, also from back in Massachusetts. One of them was also the uh, one of them is uh, who's the co-director of uh, Sunshine Away, uh, wrote and direct that uh, short Lost and Found, and uh, and that that guy's name is Joshua Leonard. And then there's uh, the writer director of Sunshine Away is Lance Reinsterner, a good friend of mine from uh, for about ten years ago. Um, and uh, that movie is is pretty complicated and and cool. It's a, it's like a like a drama suspense type of thing where I play a killer um, in the woods. I'm trying to think what I can't get. Well, I don't want to give too much away with this one because uh, it's got like, some pretty cool uh, scenes right. at the end and sort of twists stuff. Right. But uh, yeah, I, a killer who uh, basically uh, escapes in this insane asylum and has been living in the woods for uh, a few years now. I, I would I would think anyway, and uh, he focuses in on one guy that he had met at this uh, insane asylum and sort of manipulates this guy's future and kind of brings him to the town and he thinks that there's some greater meaning behind um, putting himself and this guy that he, you know, met at, you know, at briefly at this insane asylum and he thinks there's some connection between them and he basically tries to ruin his life. <laughs> Interesting. I got to check yeah, that out. Yeah, it's a really wild uh, movie. I really, I hope it gets to uh, Netflix or somewhere. Uh, soon because I, it's, I think it's some of the best acting work I've ever done and it's a really great indie and a great script and uh, it was very well executed for not a lot of money and uh, so I re- would really love for uh, this to come out on DVD at some point. Yeah, and, and I also noticed I've read some articles, a lot of these filmmakers are 
getting smart now because we have a, lo- a lot of pirating going on, you know, with movies being watched before they're released or somehow someone leaks on the internet. Is they're going on that on demand thing where they're putting it out there uh, to cut down some of the pirating, you know what I mean? So that, that's a good idea. Yeah. Now, the next movie, it's why you're on here. Um, I've been been hearing about it for quite a while since I interviewed Larry Butler. And speaking of Larry Butler, I must tell you this. I got a uh, Facebook message from Larry Butler the other day, so I said, what the heck, I'll call him and see what he's up to. Well, Mr. Larry Butler wanted to do a um, an intro for my uh, interview, you know, intro for my interview podcast site. So I had him on last night, and he did his professor inter- in- yeah. interpretation on the intro. So that's going to be debuted today. Um, people who didn't see Pan Man probably won't understand it until they watched until they they watched the trailer or even listen to my review. Now, just to let you know, um, the Pan Man review is number one on my blog site. I think it has like 75 listens already. And oh, people, wow. people seem to be interested in Pan Man because on my horror movie review intro, I have some audio from the Pan Man trailer. I cut it up a little bit to add, you know, make a couple clips, put it together, just to give, because uh, it has that neat uh, uh, Panama from Van Halen on it, and, you know, and I just added some yeah. audio, and that's. Uh, pretty cool. But go ahead. You are the creator of Pan Man, which you played Pan Man. And uh, if you want to talk about the movie and explain how it went making it, behind the scenes jokes, especially with G. Larry Butler, we are all dying to hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, let's see. I don't, I don't know how far back you want to go with this, but Pan Man goes back to uh, 1999, actually. Um, I, uh, I was, uh, went to high school in Medford, Massachusetts and made, um, made a, a couple of short films in my video production class, uh, called Pan Man, and then there was a sequel right when I got out of high school that I made. And the, uh, the original one was about 20 minutes long, and, uh, we showed it at, uh, at Medford High, and, uh, people loved it, and I was sort of forever known as Pan Man in high school, and, uh, <laughs> still actually show Pan Man, the original one, in the uh, video production classes at Medford High in sort of like the introduction class in uh, September. Oh, cool. Sort of a, what you can do if you try your hardest in uh, video production. <laughs> <laughs> so that's sort of an honor uh, to me. Um, and uh, so it pretty much lay dormant for about 10 years uh, in the back of my mind. <laughs> and uh, I wrote a script, a uh, feature script for it, uh, maybe in 2007 or... 2006, and uh, and I thought it was pretty cool, and uh, <clears throat> I really wanted to try to get money to make it, but um, I thought that the idea was just too bizarre to actually get people to invest in uh, without seeing it first. So uh, I thought to uh, to do some webisodes and uh, create some you know little short scenes to uh, maybe help in generating a, a budget for it. Right, and uh, so that's what we did. We made four webisodes, um, and you can find those online. I think most of them. I think they both. Well, so I guess we, we made four webisodes, and uh, we really, we really love them. And, and, and the re- response we got was, you know, was exactly what we were hoping for. A lot of laughter, and uh, you know, we found out in making them that uh, more violence, uh, more blood, the funnier it is. Right, and, uh, <laughs> and so really. And uh, we really loved uh, the the last two episodes that we made so much that uh, that uh, my co-director um, in the movie Jim Zagaroli uh, talked me into making a feature. <laughs> I wanted to make a short film, uh, go like four scenes, four or five scenes or something, and then use that to try to make money to make this um, to make this script that I wrote. Right. And and <laughs> he just sort of said, you know. Let's just do it ourselves. We have uh, we have some uh, some equipment at our disposal from uh, at our disposal from Iron Sink um, when uh, when I was uh, working there full time. So I was pretty much uh, equipment managing this uh, these cameras and lights. And uh, so all we needed was pretty much a food budget, and we needed some friends uh, actors who would uh, act on deferred pay and uh, and money for blood and props and, and that kind of thing. And so. I said, uh, "Okay, let's do it," and uh, and so that was about 
last, I think that was August of uh, 2009, and uh, so we went into production um, pretty soon after. I wrote a script in about, I wrote the, the script for the movie in about three weeks. Okay. Just sort of shut myself in and uh, went to town, visited a lot of uh, kitchen stores, and even wrote in my kitchen to get inspired. And uh, <laughs> 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 what we got was this uh, crazy script, and actually, um, I know you've seen the movie Most people listening definitely haven't But um, the movie is sort of structured in a weird way Where we have It's it's almost backwards We have one of the biggest twists happen At about the 25-30 minute mark in the movie <laughs> And uh, and that was actually one of our webisodes That uh, that scene And I'm sure you know what I'm talking uh-huh. about uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of our webisodes so, And we love that scene so much That we needed to put it in And so I sort of wrote and the other uh, the other scene that we kept in from our webisodes was the house death scene, which is like the third scene in the movie. Right. And so, uh, so I basically wrote the feature script around those two scenes, knowing that uh, we really wanted those two scenes in there <laughs> already. Yeah, it's I, I it, you know I, you you heard my review right? What I said, and it was so funny because I, I now is that your mom on Facebook too? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Bec- <laughs> When I reviewed it, I wrote, "Okay, Tim, I have a question for you. How can you drive with a pot on your head?" That got such that got a lot of comments. I mean, <laughs> your mom goes, "Yeah, Tim. By the way, how did you drive with a pot in your head?" <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was one that she got really annoyed at back in uh, 1999 when I uh, did that in those original movies. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> but we did it a lot a lot safer this time, actually. Right. Um, Hammond drives a few times. Uh, the first time he drives, he puts his hood on, and so we pretty much only shoot it from behind, so I never had the pot on. Right. But the second time, at the end of the movie, uh, when we, we get a little more detailed than the shots of Hammond driving, <laughs> we uh, actually uh, we flopped the uh, the shot. We, we had me in the passenger seat holding my hands up like I, I was holding the steering wheel and then we just flopped it in post and it looked like I was driving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, a little camera trick. but I tell you what, people, um, you're listening to this interview. Uh, when it is available down the road, you guys must see this. If you guys like horror comedies, it you know, you guys are gonna get a kick out of it because my, like I said to you, my wife walks in in towards the middle of the movie, and uh, there's a scene that she, seen that. She started laughing. Is I'm not going to say too much, but it's a scene where the guy and a girl is in uh, in the professor's house, and he keeps asking them where Pan Man is, and his girlfriend keeps running her mouth telling him what you're what what he's grabbing to use on him. I ain't saying no more. But my wife goes, "Damn, that's funny." <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's good. I mean, uh, it's just cleverly made. You know, people have to really see this because they're going to get a kick out of it because I just love the slapstick in it like I told you before you know I kind of knew it was good but I was totally surprised by it after I watched it that it's actually better than what I thought it was and I'm not saying that it was going to be you know what I mean it's just entertaining yeah. it's entertaining you got these morons you got, you got that moron in the beginning Mr. Cool Mr. I Smoke Pot in the Car you know, you know what I'm talking about. But it's clever how it's made. You you went different options in the uh, restaurant scene was funny, too. But I, I like how Professor Hunter... You know, <laughs> oh, he needs a trip. But anyways, uh, people have to see this. I can't wait to get the reaction of it. Dread Central likes it. Am I correct? Who's that? Dread Central oh, likes it. Central. Yeah, Dread Central found hey, Dread Central, it. Oh, yeah. man, I'm not yeah. sure how. They said Pan Man is marinated in evil. <laughs> yeah, they wrote a nice article on it. That's cool. Um, and the, the the cool thing is, they didn't even uh, they hadn't even seen it yet. They just found it found our website basically and said and wrote an article uh, on you know they, that they really want to see it. So I right. took that as a as a pretty big compliment. Heck yeah! <laughs> and gruesome Herzog likes it. Come on, you know. <laughs> no. Absolutely. Yeah, I am flattered by your review. I'm very excited uh, uh, about. Uh, about all that you said about it, I'm very yeah, it makes me very happy. You're actually the, our very first review. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. So yeah, so hopefully this is a, a good uh, sign of things to come. I think so. Trust me. You know, I mean, you, you you'll have your critics who 
who claim that they don't like comedy horror, you know, blah, blah, blah. But but deep down inside, they're liars, because back in the 80s, that's majority of what you had besides, you know, some horror horror, but you had a lot of comedy horror back in the 80s, especially with zombie movies, you know what I mean? So Yeah, definitely. But anyways, and, go ahead. And even a lot of those, um, I was just going to say, even a lot of those, uh, you know, the old Jason movies um, in particular, are mm-hmm. you know really funny to me? <laughs> yeah, and Freddy Krueger too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you ask me, those are all horror comedies. But now Halloween, I don't think is. But then again, right. Halloween died after Part Two. I didn't quite understand the uh, Michael Myers' his niece and all that bull crap. And then it goes back to the H two O later on. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. But but trust me, horror fanatics will love this movie. I mean. I mean, it's comedy, you know, comedy also, but uh, I just get a kick out of seeing a killer with a pot in his head. <laughs> it's so clever. It's clever. I mean, it looks like Michael Myers back in the back in the 70s with a pot in his head. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's exactly what we're going for. <laughs> but wanted to, uh, wanted to structure it, you know, it lo- looks and, uh, and smells like a horror movie, but... Uh, Really, you know, nothing too much about it is is hard because there's always that joke that, you know, that we never really even bring, you know, we're, we never really even talk about in the movie that you know he's got a pot on his head and right, and he, right. And, uh, that's the part that's funny. <laughs> that's the part that's funny. <laughs> it's like it's like they, they they don't even see his mask. I mean, his his pot. It's weird. It's funny. Is, right. there, any, is there anything else that you're get yourself involved in uh, next? Um, let's see next. Well, I really, I would really love for uh, for Pan Man to get out there as much as possible. I want to. Uh, I, r- I wrote a few more uh, horror scripts that I want to uh, that I want to make. Good. And I got one that uh, that I'm really itching to make right now. After uh, after putting the uh, Pan Man or after uh, finishing it, um, I want to make uh, one called uh, the Bogey Man, which is uh, an original script that I wrote. It's about a uh, a killer on a mini golf course. Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, at first glance, it may sound a little bit like Pan Man. It's definitely is in tone, probably in the way that it's fun and uh, and funny and scary too. Well, more scary than Pan Man, but uh, yeah. So he's sort of a zombie who uh, who got unjustly uh, killed on a mini golf course. He's a mini golf course champion, and uh, he comes back to life when these kids are having a party on his uh, on his golf course, and uh, you know, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> now I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you want to over your six underground. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so now, when are you exactly going to be start marketing this on the on the horror circuits? On the, on the um, well, we got to figure that out because um, we want to we want to see if we can run the festival circuit. Um, we we we're hoping we're going to have some success uh, in that uh, because you know the horror film festivals uh, in October. So I think things are going to heat up around then. I'm right. hoping we get into a lot of them, and like you said, you know, I, it, I think it's gonna. Uh, I'm hoping it's gonna really resonate with uh, the the horror fans. Yeah. Because uh, you know everything about it says horror, except for that really for, for the jokes, you know. Right, right. Now, um, have you thought about the the horror find in Gettysburg, in Labor Day weekend? No, I haven't. What's that one? That's uh, where it's like it's a horror convention where um, I know you can call them and see if if, you, if they'll accept your movie, but the same thing that people may bring in movies that they made and and they have a um, like a theater up there where they'll let you let you show it in a the theater um, for people to Ooh. see um, but it's called horrifying but I'll get some more details for you and I'll, I'll let you know but I know you have to That'd do it great. you have to do it soon because it's over Labor Day weekend you know like Bill Mosley and D Wallace they're all up there signing autographs and stuff so yeah I'll give you the info right. I'll, I'll let you know but that'd be cool if you can get the thing up there yeah, that sounds good. And you're pretty close to Gettysburg. Yeah, I'm like 45 minutes away. Yeah, Ooh. I went. I went last year for the first time. It was pretty cool. Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll get the info and I'll pass it along to you. Okay. It'll be great. Interesting. So, all right. Well, Tim, thanks a lot, and I do want to thank you for the IMDb credit. By the way, um, appreciate that. That's thanks. pretty cool. But um, hey, well, thank you very much for uh, giving us such a a great review. And uh, yeah, it was very. Uh, very flattered and uh, yeah I love it thank you very much no problem and I thank you for coming on and taking some time talking about your career in Pan Man and uh, when you see Mr. Butler 
Tell him anything you want. Just tell him that Gruesome said this. Just get him all riled up for me, will you? <laughs> I will. I'm actually, yeah, me and, uh, shh, quiet, quiet, me and, uh, Tina, uh, who plays, uh, Justice in the movie, mm-hmm. um, we're gonna go down uh, and hang out with Larry, uh, this coming weekend to, uh, to finally show him the movie. He, uh, actually hasn't even seen the finished, uh, product yet. I know, and I <laughs> accidentally told him a scene. Oh, shh, shh, sh- I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, he's really excited. I wanted him to wait for the premiere, but uh, but I left it up to him because he's been really itching to see it. And so uh, we're going to go down to his place, and uh, and hopefully uh, he's going to love it. Well, you let me know what he thinks. Definitely will. Thanks, Tim. Um, you take care right, of yourself, you and uh, I'm hoping this thing gets big for you because it's, it's well worth it. It's funny. It's funny and good. Great. Thanks, Tim. Take care. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. Bye. Bye now. Hello, hello. This is Professor Hunter from Pan Man. I am delighted to recommend Gruesome Herzog's podcast to the outside world. His infamous interviews are some of the best in the business. He's deliciously diabolical. <laughs> hey, this is Sean Kane, director of Silent Night Zombie Night, and you're listening to Gruesome Herzog. Hello, this is Natalie Sheets. I play Jenna in the film Madison County, and you're listening to Gruesome Herzog. Hey, horror fans, this is Ace Marrero, and you are listening to Gruesome Herzog. Dig it! I'm Jessica Funneborn, and I'm listening to Gruesome Herzog. This is Yvette Corvea, and most of you know me as Marla from Run, Bitch, Run. She's a really evil, crazy bitch. And you guys are listening to Gruesome Herzog. Hi, this is David Z. Stamp, and you're listening to Gruesome Hey, this is Bill Oberst, Jr. I play Dale in the film Dismal. And as Dale would say, let me tell you something. You listen to the gruesome herd song. You got Dale's word on that. Hey, this is James Cotton. I'm a director, writer, producer. You're listening to Gruesome Herd Zog. Jack Harrison, action actor and stunt coordinator of all three stunt teams. I played the character Idiot in the movie Dismal. And you're listening to Gruesome Herd Zog. 